Well, welcome back to GIS Analysis at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to compute the minimal cost path. So what you need to do is go to this website and download this test cost path geodatabase. It's a zip file, so unzip it into your NRM 435 folder. So right mouse click, save link as, and we'll put it in NRM 435. And then we have to unzip it. So if you right mouse click, extract, that will unzip it. So here is our test cost path geodatabase after it's been unzipped. And it will have a raster in terms of how much it costs per meter to cross each grid cell. So let's add that to our data frame. And there's no special reference information, but that's fine. So we have a cost raster, and that's the cost per meter to travel across each cell. So for example, from the center of this cell, it's going to cost to cross the entire cell $1 per meter. If we start at the center, it'll be half that cost. Here, to cross that cell, the entire width will be $3 per meter. And you notice there's two cells that have no data. Those cells will be treated as barriers that we can't build a path across any no data cell. So let's go to our arc map and we'll symbolize these two no data cells as barriers. Under layer properties, symbology, let's stretch it and we'll stretch using a color ramp going from cool to hot. And then we'll also, under symbology, display no data as black. And that way our no data will be displayed as black. So here's our two no data cells. Here's the highest cost, if we use the identify tool, a cost of $8 per meter. And then this one would be a cost of $1 per meter, $3 per meter, etc. Our second raster represents resources we want to build a road to. So here are our resources. This one coded with 1 and this cell coded with a 2. And then if we also look at our geodatabase, we have a starting location. So this point is our starting location. And it's at the center of basically these grid cells, but it's represented by a point. So what we want to do is we want to calculate using this cost raster, what is the minimum cost to travel to get to every cell. So to do that, we're going to use a geoprocessing tool, cost distance. So the input is where we're going to start from. So that's our point. And then the raster representing our cost surface is the cost per meter. Then we'll output a cost distance raster. So let's say cost, cost from starting location. And then we're also going to have what's called a backlink raster, and that's going to be the direction of travel from every cell. So I name that direction raster. And if we look at the help, the direction raster will contain values 0 through 8, which defines the direction of the next neighboring cell along the least cumulative cost path. So basically, a value of 1 means go to the right. A value of 5 means go to the left. A value of 3 means go down. A value of 7 means go up, etc. So then we'll execute this tool to calculate the cumulative distance as we go from this starting location out. So let's symbolize that raster cost from starting location. If we go to properties, let's stretch it and we'll use a color ramp from cool to hot. So the hotter the color, the higher the cumulative cost. And then let's give a value that's zero dark blue. So here we start, the value is zero. And then if we go to the next cell, the value is 650, the next cell 1060, the next cell 13, etc. 
So basically, we have this raster now, which represents the minimum cumulative cost using our cost raster and starting at our starting location. So we want to start at this location and then calculate the least cost path to get to a resource. So we can use the cost path tool. So our destination is our resource. And our cumulative cost raster is the cost from the starting location. And then our direction raster is our direction raster. So then this will be our cost path. So the cost path will represent the minimum possible cost to go from the starting location to a resource. So therefore, we want to do the best single path. And then OK will give us the best single path to go from the starting location to a resource. So the minimum path to get to a resource in terms of cost would be start at your starting location, go to the upper left pixel, go to the lower left pixel, and then go left. And we've done that using the cost per meter raster. So if we look at the raster attribute table, it also has what the total cost is in total dollars to go from the center of this cell up, down left, over resource. So it will cost us $1,310.66. So that's the minimum cost path to go from this location to a resource given our original raster of cost per meter. So basically the way it figures out the least cost path is we start in this cell and we already know by starting in this cell it's going to cost us $1,310 to get to a resource. And then from the direction raster we know go in this direction to this cell. If we're in this cell, the cumulative cost would be $674 to get to a resource. From the direction raster, we know to go to this cell. From the direction raster, we know to go to this cell. In this cell, we're at a resource cell, so then we stop. So the final step typically is to convert our path raster into a line, because it's easier to symbolize a line. So we'll use the tool raster to polyline, and we'll uncheck simplify. So then we could symbolize our line to represent. So this is the least cost path to go from one cell to the cell that's adjacent to a resource. So there's our resource. Now let's say we want to start here, and we want to build a new road to get to each resource. So in this case, our resources are defined by a value of 1 and a value of 2. So what we could do is repeat our analysis. So if I go to the Results tab and then Cost Path, what we will do is not get the best single path, but do it by zone. So by zone, every different resource value will be considered a different zone. So now the output raster has two paths. So here's the least cost path to get to this resource, and here's the least cost path to get to this resource. And then once again, we could convert those to lines to symbolize the lines. So our output line we'll call least cost path line to each resource. And this time, let's have it snap to the center of every grid cell. So if you go to environments, and then processing extent, under snap raster, choose one of your rasters. So let's snap it to our cost per meter raster. And that way we'll get the line in the center of our cells. And we can symbolize our lines using different symbols. So here, the red line means you're in your starting location cell. And then this dash line is the minimum cumulative cost to get to this resource. This dash line is the minimum cumulative cost to get to this resource. Let's assume that we have an existing road, and the existing road, if you go to the geodatabase, is starting locations many. So these are 
basically locations along this existing road. And what we want to do is calculate the best single path to get to a resource from any of these cells along the existing road. So our first step will be to compute the cumulative cost distance raster from the existing road. So our feature source data is our starting location and our cost raster is cost per meter, and then our output will be the raster cost from existing road. And then we'll have a direction raster also output. And then we'll symbolize our raster cost from existing road, where a cool color is low cost and a hot color is high cost. And then we'll also symbolize a cost of zero will be black. So you notice our output raster is only within the extent of our existing road, and we want our output raster to be within the extent of the entire area. So we'll go back to our results, and under environments, we'll tell it the processing extent is the same as our cost per meter raster. So now we have the cumulative cost as we go away from these pixels representing the road. So anywhere in these pixels, it's a cost of zero. And as we get further and further away, the cumulative cost gets higher and higher and higher. And these two cells are no data because our original cost raster, those two cells were no data or barrier. So now we can calculate, get to these resources from any of these candidate locations along the existing road. So we're trying to build a new road to the resources and the cost distance raster is our cost from existing road and then our direction raster is our direction raster and then the output will call least cost path to resource. So then we want the best single path to go from anywhere along the existing road to a resource. So here is our solution starting at this cell, go to this cell and you're at a resource. So if we uncheck our least cost path, you see we're sitting at a resource.